Hi everyone. Does everybody remember the start of Brexit? I mean, obviously I do, being English. But does anybody equate the start of Brexit to the politically divided period of the time of the end? Because I'm all about putting things and jigsaw pieces in so that we can arrive at uh, where we are in regards to Revelation. So let's just say that the Brexit period and the European Union and the United Kingdom leaving and all that discord that was taking place at that time, let's say that this is the biblical fulfilment of prophecy of the feet of iron and clay in the great image and the fact that we had this breakaway and this weakening so we had the iron and the clay and there's just no strength there anymore so this is the politically divided period of the time of the end or we're right at the feet of the great image then we also had an increase in apostasy the likes of which i could never recall i've seen apostasy in the 70s and 80s but i certainly haven't seen it to the level that i've seen it over the last 10 years so let's say that this is another part of the jigsaw piece and this is the um the great apostasy they fall in the way and and people forging their own roots independent from the established route let's not say who that established route is at the moment let's just say that it is an established route out there because there has to be because the road to life and only few find it so there is an established route and very few are on it but the increase in apostasy of which we all seem to be part of those that are posting on um, youtube th this is all part of prophecy because the end does not come until apostasy you've seen the scripture so that's two jigsaw pieces that have been put in as regards revelation and now we're getting all these great secrets all these deeply entrenched things all these these lies that have been uncovered by mainstream governments leaders all these liars that have got away with it for so many years and all of a sudden we're having our eyes opened of course that is a revelation that is the meaning of revelation because that veil that was covering up our eyes for so long god wants to remove that veil so that we can see that satan's system is a doomed system it was never worth fighting for and that seems to be happening and you've got that many truth seekers out there truth proclaimers of course we don't really know what the the divine truth is until we get to the judgment period and that's when we'll find out whether our course of action has been the right one could be that we we don't make the grade will we just have to accept it there'd be nothing we can do about it if we don't make the grade and that we go off to destruction and watch others go off to life how will that make you feel if you're stood there and you're judged on that day because god has set us a day aside to judge the world it says so an appointed time how are we going to feel if we don't make that grade and what happens if it was close in this judgment of the sheep and goats what happens if we get to hear what the results are and we ask about it and say was i close to survival and an answer comes back you were very close but you just didn't quite make it because of this or because of that and he and they point out during the sheep and goats separation what it was that you failed on it would be devastating if that happened absolutely devastating it could be one single thing and that's why you didn't make it as a sheep 
and you were put down as a goat and so you went off to destruction. Do you think it will be like that? Maybe it won't, but who's to say? We don't really know. We just don't know, do we? we we've got this vision in Revelation where he sat on a throne in a judgment fashion and passing people off left and right to life and death. And we've got this vision of what that's all about. But if he turned round and said to me, Martin, you was doing so, so well up until, and he pointed out the exact moment and period where I failed to get everlasting life. I'd be mortified. I'd, I'd say to myself, well, why did I do that? Why didn't I endure? Why didn't I trust in God more? Why did I trust in myself so much when all I had to do was just reach out and ask for a relationship with the Most High? I would beat myself up. I can tell you now, I would absolutely beat myself up just before I went off to death. But I would have to accept it because they were the cards I was dealt and I would play those cards. They were the hand. I couldn't change that hand because time had run out. So can you force God to save you? Well, you can't, no. You can't force God to save you. And when is the time to have a relationship with the Most High? Well, surely it has to be now before we get into the Great Tribulation period. Do you think it would be possible to have a relationship with God when we get into the tribulation? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that one to you guys. You might think otherwise. But for somehow, I keep thinking there's got to be a cut-off period for salvation. And the best cut-off period I know is the start of the tribulation. And when the rapture takes place and the heavenly ones go off, to the heavens to be joint heirs for a short time and then they come back to join in the vindication work along with the angels in the battle of armageddon so for me it's it's just one jigsaw piece after the other that keep getting put in what a life it's certainly a hard life isn't it if you weaken but how do you stay strong when you're only relying on your human ability? Well, the answer is you can't. You cannot have the strength to survive and to endure through this system, through everything that Satan is going to throw at us. And he's going to throw everything before he's abyssed. And I don't think it's possible for us to withstand that kind of an attack on our own merit, just relying on our own strength. And that's why I'm saying, and I'm saying this to myself first, that I need to have a strong relationship with the Most High now, not later, not when we get into the tribulation. I need to have that relationship now. And I think about the apostles when they spent so much time with Jesus Christ and they built up that relationship while he was with them, talking to them every day. And they built that relationship up for a reason so that they could stand up later against Roman attack. And they needed to have that strong relationship, didn't they? And I think we're going to need to have a strong relationship, people. Because I just don't think that we will we'll last at all once we get into the tribulation. I think we'll just go down like Skittles. But if we had a strong bond relationship with the Most High, the Heavenly Father, the Alpha and the Omega, if we had that strong relationship now and we started to hate the things that he finds abhorrent now on this earth, and there's many things he finds abhorrent, it's usually the things that Satan finds enjoyable. So it's just the exact opposite of what Satan loves to know 
what God hates and vice versa. One is one is light and one is dark. And you cannot love both. Even if you do live in this world, you're still working and slaving for Satan in this system. You have to view it as temporary people. I'm trying to do that now. I'm trying to look for a way of not slaving away until I get so ill that I can't work. But I have said this previously, before God's messianic kingdom gets ushered in, it, for me, it, it would be great if there was like this smooth transitional period from Satan's system now to God's messianic kingdom to come and we could just be transferred into it and not be put into a world of turmoil but unfortunately people we are going to be put into a world of turmoil we are going to have to see if we can last through the great tribulation for as long as possible but you're not likely to last if you don't have that strong bond relationship with God and the time for that as I've said is now and not later what happens if I tried come the tribulation you know we get into the full scale of the tribulation and then I suddenly said to myself and I started praying incessantly I want this relationship with the most high I cannot say that that I'm going to get that why is it we always think that we have to have everything on our earthly terms it's, it doesn't work like that you can't hold God to ransom, can you? You can't say, I'm willing to have a relationship with you now. I'm willing to do everything that you ask of me. Now, now you can see the system falling and crumbling before you. No, it has to be now before it gets to that point. God has to see that we're sincere now. It's easy once we get into the crumbling period of the evidence of his existence and everything and his anger towards the ungodly. It'll be easy then, won't it, to say, I want this relationship with you. But he's not obliged to take you up. He's not obliged to answer your prayers. If anything, he could turn around and say, oh, so you want to know me now, do you? You want this relationship with me now, but you didn't want to know, did you, for 40 years, 30, well, whatever, how many years it was that you've been doing your own thing, or that we've been doing our own thing. And so I wouldn't blame him if he just kept me at full arm's distance and said, no, there is no relationship for you now. You've done your dash. You've made your choice. Food for thought, peeps. Food for thought. I'll see you again.